everybody, Tyler with Meeple Mountain here, bringing you another board game review. This time from our friends at Slugfest Games, who've been kind enough to give us a copy of their new title, Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. Now, if you're familiar with Red Dragon Inn, the game above my head, uh, it's a game about a group of adventurers coming back to the bar, wanting to spin their gold, have a drink, and unwind. Well, Tales from the Red Dragon Inn builds on that concept where you and your group of adventurers are actually out on those quests that gave you the gold to bring to the bar to begin with. Uh, this is a fully cooperative game where you and up to three other players, so one to four players, will be set out on various missions and scenarios trying to overcome obstacles and beat the schemer uh, that's putting these kind of obstacles and enemies in your path. This will be a typical dungeon crawler where you'll work your way uh, through a large map trying to overcome uh, and defeat the enemies that you meet so that you can defeat the boss uh, to complete the campaign. In this game, there are five sealed campaigns that contain multiple missions and scenarios each. And as you open those up as you go, you'll unlock additional cards, abilities, characters, all kinds of things to discover as you build on your experience throughout the game. So there's a lot packed into this title and a few really interesting mechanics that give it good quality of life for setup and teardown uh, as well well as kind of keep it fresh in that very saturated dungeon crawler uh, market that's out there in the board game world. So without any further ado, let's get to the table and learn how to play Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. Welcome to Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. In this cooperative dungeon crawler, you and up to three other players are going to be working together to overcome the obstacles set out before you by the AI, or the schemer, that set out all of the automated enemies and difficulties that you will face. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here on the screen, so we'll kind of take this in bites, uh, and then we'll zoom in and look at a few different things. Now this is a cooperative campaign-based game. There are a series of sealed campaign packs that will open up with additional rules, enemies, components and all kinds of new tokens that will be introduced as you take bites of this game. We've opened up the first campaign, the first chapter. Uh, I don't want to give away too much of the new content so we're going to keep a few things sealed and kind of protected so that uh, there's not a lot of spoilers here but we've opened up the first chapter and we're set up for the first scenario of the game. But as you play through these various scenarios and chapters you'll get additional cards from this sealed vault of cards that will give you new abilities, new enemies, and all kinds of things. Uh, setup is quite a breeze as the maps come on these preset uh, little sheets of paper that kind of roll out, uh, kind of borrowing that typical idea of almost like the, the map book from Jaws of the Lion, where you'll grab the correct scenario, the correct chapter, uh, and flip out your page. You'll have all of the stats that you need on the enemies that you'll be facing, as well as reminders for the rounds and everything set up and ready to go. All you'll need to do is populate the map with your character, enemy tokens based on player count, and put a few doors on the area. Now, as you'll see in the map, it's divided into these uh, hex grid formats where your characters will move around the map as you play. You'll be uh, attempting to overcome traps and enemies uh, as you kind of move from section to section and once you move through a door section you'll populate additional enemies in the next area. Uh, you'll be moving kind of with basic again that Gloomhaven style terrain move where uh, every adjacent hex will move you through. There's sometimes difficult yellow terrain hexes or impassable purple terrain hexes that you'll have to uh, tactically plan to overcome. Teamwork uh, is an essential aspect of this game uh, so you'll want to make sure that you have a curious party that fits your tactics and strategies. Uh, each character has a unique amount of health and abilities uh, that give them a little bit of asymmetry and unique play style and, and kind of a feel to them. Every character has a track that they'll be able to upgrade as you go throughout the campaign, which will allow you to start each round with more and more of these unique power tokens that are going to activate your abilities, empower your abilities, and give you the edge over your opponents. You'll start with some basic action cards that you'll gain additional uh, count of as you play throughout the game, as well as equipment that will again give you those tokens. Uh, we'll take a zoomed in look at a character here in just a moment, but speaking of tokens, you'll notice we have a lot of different types of tokens in this game that empower your actions and give you all kinds of incredible abilities. Thankfully, there's a nice cheat sheet here that reminds you what the power tokens do and how they all work uh, and interact with each other. So you don't have to keep those all uh, in your memory, but they're here to remind you how that will work. Uh, you also have attack and battle dice that you'll be rolling to deal damage and figure out how much damage you're able to deal. The schemer will have his own set of dice that will determine what actions the enemies will take based on the result rolled at that given time. One of the factions, uh, or factors that I really enjoyed about Tales from the Red Dragon Inn is how the initiative system works. 
it has a little bit of a unique initiative system where you'll have the initiative bag here and every player, depending on player count, will add one of their initiative tokens, either a full one or a full and a partial one based on player count into the bag. Enemies will also add a token as well to track uh, their initiative. All of these items will drop into the bag simultaneously, will be shaken up, and then one will be pulled at a time to determine who will take a turn. So in every given round of the game, the enemies could go absolutely first or could go last. And you'll know what actions they will take, but you don't know when they'll go or when you'll be able to go. And so it always creates a bit of freshness and a bit of uh, anxiety on when the enemies will go, when you'll be able to go, how much you'll be able to accomplish or prepare for their actions, uh, which is very, very fun. I found that uh, it kept things very fresh and it was quite enjoyable. But when this comes out, all the enemies will go that match that color. Uh, so we'll see blue, of course, is tied to the blue enemies that we have out on the map. When you pull out one of your character tokens, if it's the full gold token, uh, they will get a set of actions and or shenanigans that they're able to take on their turn. And they'll be able to spend those to utilize the cards that they have in front of them for very strong actions or the base actions that they have on their character. Uh, if they pull a partial action, they'll only be able to do a single action or a shenanigan. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, once we get a zoomed in look at a character. Uh, but again, this is the flow of the game. You'll play through a series of rounds with the enemies and characters taking their actions and turns based on what comes out of the initiative bag, and you'll be attempting to always accomplish a goal. In this particular case, in the first scenario here, we need to find and defeat the sparking engine that is summoning all of these automatons and bringing them to life in the Red Dragon Inn. So we'll have to uh, defeat all of these uh, opponents, work our way through the three rooms, and find the boss in the Room of Doom and defeat him. Uh, if we're able to do that, we'll successfully complete the scenario and move to the next. Otherwise, we'll have to <laughs> try again. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a zoomed in look at a character area and talk a little bit about how your turn will progress. All right, here we have a zoomed in view of a particular character, in this case, Fiona, uh, one of the beloved classics of the Red Dragon Inn franchise, uh, kind of that typical paladin, warrior, brawler kind of feel. Uh, each of these characters brings with them, uh, again, a unique amount of asymmetry and a playstyle that matches what you would believe uh, their character would traditionally do. In this case, Fiona specializes in defense. She's going to have a lot of abilities and ways to reduce damage that she takes while dealing a, a solid amount of damage out to opponents. Uh, so what we'll notice here is we have our main character card. That gives us our total health, uh, which is 9. Once we receive that, we will flip to our injured side and continue, our wounded side. If we have then are defeated again, that's bad. We would lose that campaign. So you want to make sure you keep your friends alive. Uh, and not wounded. When someone becomes wounded, you'll notice their abilities actually change. So you do kind of get a, a different play style or uh, empowered abilities as you get wounded. Uh, it helps keep the game fresh and create some really interesting moments of tension uh, throughout the game. Again, I mentioned this, but each character is going to have a unique uh, skill tree tied to them. Uh, as you level, you'll be able to get uh, and choose what tokens you want as you kind of follow this grid around. All of the tokens do various things, but you'll notice there's a big uh, focus on damage boosts and damage reductions, shield tokens. Um, you'll also have items and equipment that you can bring with you like this pot lid, as well as cards that you'll bring to the table as well. All of those will allow you to spend actions and may give you starting tokens. For instance, the pot lid and this particular card would give you shield tokens to bring into the fight. Shield tokens, as you can see, uh, can reduce damage that you receive as you discard them. So again, that kind of gives you that tankiness that you would expect to feel when playing a paladin or someone that is a well-armored fighter. Uh, you'll notice here on her main card, uh, all of these have a skill tree or amount of time that it takes to use them, so a cooldown. These are zero cost, which means you can use them every round, but your cards have a, a cooldown right now of three. So if you were to use one of these actions, you would place some time tokens onto that particular card. Uh, in this case three, uh, and every round when you take a turn you would clean one of those off so that you know you know eventually once these are all gone you're able to utilize that ability again. So as you can see there are moments when you need to choose which skills to use and when to maximize your efficiency and make sure that you're not locked out of those abilities again when you really need them in a clutch moment later throughout the game. Uh, so as you'll go uh, you'll notice these have various actions. There's of course melee attacks that are going to be adjacent attacks to your figure on the map. Some attacks may be ranged uh, that give you a 
certain number of hexes away that you can attack, but many attacks will utilize your dice. Your dice will allow you to roll to see how much damage you're able to inflict. There's a one damage side, a two damage side, and then a one damage and empower ability on your dice, as well as a critical hit, which does all of your damage plus one. So damage uh, can be a little bit variable, which, uh, you know, will keep things fresh and add a little bit of luck into the game. But overall, uh, your strategy and tactics on when to utilize your abilities and how to utilize your power tokens will really set you apart from a very successful run at a uh, scenario in Red Dragon Inn or a very failed one if you're unable to execute your abilities correctly. Let's go ahead and zoom in next at the enemy mods and take a look a little bit about what we can expect as we face the opponents in Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. Every map that you set up for Tales from the Red Dragon Inn is going to come preset with the enemies that you'll be facing in that particular section and uh, their abilities, health, all of the things for that, which is really nice. You don't have to keep track of those things. You don't have to find them from a deck of cards and sort them out. It's all pre-done for you. You pull out a sheet of paper, you're ready to take uh, your actions in that particular scenario. It keeps setup honestly really fresh and makes sure that you don't have to manage a lot of little details within the game and you can jump right into the fun. So I love that. I uh, love that these are preset. But here's the enemies that you'll be facing. A blue enemy, a red enemy, and a gold enemy. This is pretty common. You'll face kind of two mob style enemies and then maybe some kind of big bad or a boss of some form. Uh, so this seems to be pretty frequent throughout at least the first chapter uh, throughout all the scenarios. So when you see these guys, they're going to have different abilities based on dice. Uh, there's going to be a set of purple dice. Uh, in every round, at the start of the round, you're going to roll for each enemy and see what kind of action that particular enemy may be taking. If there's multiple Multiple, you'll roll multiple and lock the dice in so we know what action they'll take whenever their initiative token comes up. Uh, there's different amounts of health that these guys will have, and this may change throughout the chapters. They may be stronger or weaker as you go, and their abilities may, of course, as well become empowered uh, or weakened based on you know the choices and what you're doing as you go throughout the game. But they'll traditionally have some kind of a movement as they try to target you, and then some kind of base attack uh, with a kind of a set level of damage. Uh, they may also do little shenanigans like placing trap tokens and all kinds of interesting things that keep them feeling fresh uh, and unique. Uh, very much like Gloomhaven, these characters' uh, actions and abilities feel tied to their, their art uh, that you see on them, uh, as well as kind of the vibe or feel of this type of enemy. So the, the attacks and abilities vary greatly, but honestly keep things really fun and engaging. So, as we mentioned before, we know what they do at the start of a round, but how do they act? And we talked about this a little bit with the initiative bag as these tokens come out. So when the colored token comes out matching that particular enemy type, all of those enemies that are active and visible on the map will activate, and they'll do whatever their dice tied effect will say. Uh, again, when characters come out, as we mentioned, they're going to take their actions, which may be uh, up to you know three actions and shenanigans, or if it's one of their smaller half actions, they may just get a singular action or shenanigan. Uh, so they'll take turns you know, in this particular form uh, format. Uh, so enemies will take a single action based on the dice roll. Characters will take uh, actions based on the amount of tokens that they have to spend on any given turn. Play will continue like this until the players are victorious by defeating the overall objective of that particular scenario or are defeated by the enemies. And that, in a nutshell, is everything you need to know about Tales from the Red Dragon Inn to be able to jump in and have a really good time. I hope this preview gave you a little bit of an idea about what to expect uh, and kind of what positives and maybe negatives there are with this title. Uh, I can offer my thoughts uh, for pros and cons, but I want to at least kind of recap some of the big components here that stood out to me. Uh, I really enjoyed the initiative tracking system on this game. Uh, a lot of dungeon crawlers have a system like this, but I thought this was very quick and clean in the sense that you don't really know on any given turn uh, or any given round exactly when the enemies will act, and you kind of have to plan and be flexible accordingly, because they may go first, they may go in the middle. Uh, you're not always able to plan and execute those setups, which I thought was really fun. Uh, gameplay is nice and engaging. It continues to build and grow on itself. It's a very easy teach when you start out, uh, but as you go through the chapters, you get a lot, new to a lot of new tokens, a lot of new cards and abilities and allies even that you're trying to manage, and so the game gets uh, progressively more complicated as you go, but it's in nice bites that you're able to really teach, uh, so it's not overwhelming at the start, which I think is a huge positive. A lot of asymmetry with the characters. You have Zot and Pookie, if you're familiar with them from Red Dragon Inn, with an ally where Zot will summon 
Pookie is a rabbit who can level up as well and move around the map uh, kind of independently. You have Eve who can summon illusions and move around and distract enemies. There's just a lot of unique asymmetry that feels very true to the characters you may know from the base game, the original inspiration for this game. Uh, but they all play very differently, and there's a lot of ability to customize and build based on your power tokens and cards you want to bring into the fight. And there's a lot of fun to be had there, but it's all, again, very digestible. It's not an advanced level dungeon builder, if you will, or dungeon crawler. Um, to that point, I think the map usage is incredible. I really like the maps in this game. They're quick and clean. Uh, you grab a sheet of paper, you have your enemies already ready to go. All you need to do is, based on player count, just populate a few enemy meeples and put a few doors down and you're done. It's, it's very simple uh, and clean. Uh, in the vault and cards and maps and tokens, there's just a lot to discover and it made me always want to play more to see what else I could find and unlock. Uh, a lot of mystery there. Uh, again, this isn't a legacy game, but it kind of had that feel where I was like, oh, I wonder what's behind this door. I wonder what's in this, in this box. I wonder what this token has. So lots of fun to be had there. Uh, rules are well laid out, but there are a lot of them. They're uh, just a plethoric amount of rule books, and every chapter brings a new one. So you're kind of always working with at least three rule books. You have a nice reference guide, a chapter-specific walkthrough, and then a main walkthrough that kind of teaches you how the game is played. So uh, there's a lot of paper to get through here. Uh, a good chunk of it is lore and, and flavor text. There's a lot of flavor text in the chapter-specific guide that kind of gives you the vibe and feel of what you're doing, which is immersive and fun, uh, but it's a lot of words. It's a lot of words to get through. And I will say playtime says 90 to 120 minutes. I think that's a little short. I'd say with most groups, at least in my experience, you're probably looking at more of like a three hour bite for this game. Uh, so it's it's a decent sized game. It's not a short one you're playing on lunch break. Uh, but if you know what you're getting into, I think there's a lot of fun to be had here. The gameplay is fun. Uh, it's enjoyable, but it is light enough that you're not spending a lot of time micromanaging things. You're able to get in and enjoy the title. Uh, so again, uh, very appreciative to Slugfest Games for giving us uh, this, this review copy. I hope this was a nice uh, preview of what you can expect in this game and helps inform your decision on if this is something you want to add to your collection or not. Uh, I hope you continue to come to Meeple Mountain for all of your board game related content needs. Uh, give us a like, subscribe. Uh, if you enjoy the content we're doing, we want to always uh, continue to turn out more content for you guys to check out uh, because we love this hobby too and just love adding content into this industry. So uh, again, thank you guys so much for checking this video out and as always, happy gaming. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out these links to find some other games you might want to bring to the table. This is Tyler Williams, signing off.